So I finally got to the end of my Android project build. And so in this video I'm going to be going through putting the final touches to the sculpture. Because I made each individual piece of this robot separately, this has actually turned out to be a very, very complicated project, uh, but I've got there in the end, but it has taken quite a while to get this done. I actually started doing this at the beginning of December, so here we are about four and a half months later, but at least we're finally complete now. So this is where we got to at the end of the last video. And the model's looking fairly bare compared to the final piece, so there's a fair few bits to add to this still. I'd mentioned the base in the previous part of the video, however I do want to add a lot more detail to it. So in order to add some more industrial looking detail, what I've done is to cut up some PVC plumbing pipes and put some pieces together that can go on the base like this. What I've also got is this, which is a perforated steel shoe, which uh, you can get on eBay in various sizes. So I just bought one of these to see what it would look like, but I think that's going to look quite nice as some mechanical detailing at the back of the base as well. Because I've got a lot of grills and sort of uh, pieces of holes in, I'm planning to put quite a lot of LEDs in these to add some lighting effects. What I also need is to hide this piece of wood that the robot is standing on. So what I'm going to do is build that out into a piece of industrial machinery. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is use a technique I've used previously, and that's to cover the piece of wood in sheets of styrene plastic. That'll give it a nice smooth finish and hide the fact that it's made from wood. For the pipes, um, this is something that I've been thinking of doing for a while, and what I'm going to do is make some rings with some bolts on so I can create a sort of industrial look to the pipes. For a while I've been thinking it would be quite useful to cast up various additions to some pipes so I can sort of easily create mechanical looks. So that's my master, so what I've done with this is to make a mould and cast up a lot of copies like this, and I can now add these to the pipes like this to create a nice industrial look. Once they've got some paint on and some rust effects, I think they should look quite cool. Now for the perforated steel tube, uh, what I've done is to cut up some sections of drain pipe and glued those on just to create some uh, mechanical detailing. Now because this thing is uh, partially see-through, I think it's look really nice with some lighting effects in it. So what I've done is to buy this. Now what this is, is an LED strip, similar to some of the ones I've used in previous projects. However, this one's programmable, so you can actually change the colour and put it through a sequence of lighting effects, uh, which I think will be quite useful here. Something I haven't yet covered is creating some hands for the sculpture as well. Hands are always a bit tricky because there's so many individual pieces to them, so I always tend to leave them to the last uh, part of the project. Now in this case I wanted to do something slightly different to what I've done previously. For previous models what I've done is to cast up an individual finger and then cast multiple copies of it to create the hand. I wanted to move away from that slightly and instead to try to scratch build the hand um, using various brass pieces. So what I started off doing was building the hand with some brass port holes and some custom machine brass pieces. And this is what I came up with, and I do quite like the look of it, but I think I got the proportion slightly wrong with this, as the wrist section was a little bit too long. I also couldn't quite figure out how to terminate the fingers, like I create the ends of the fingers, and it was increasingly looking like I was going to have to use some cast pieces to actually make the ends of the fingers. So in the end I thought, well if I'm going to have to do that, I may as well just cast the whole finger. So that's what I ended up doing in fact. So here's my master, and here are all the individual casts. Uh, and this is the hand that I've come up with and I'm actually quite pleased with it, I think it looks quite cool. I also quite like the arrangement of the thumb, I think that's going to be quite a useful way of doing hands in the future. Now something I also wanted to have was a gun for the robot to hold, and so I've started building this, and what I've done is to actually put a neodymium magnet into the hand and another in the gun, that way the, the gun will attach to the hand quite nicely, um, and I don't have to worry about the hand actually mechanically holding it, the magnet will hold it in place. Now 
I still had a few pieces of the robot that I needed to detail, so here I am uh, scratching some panel lines into this calf piece and drilling in some holes in the back here to create a mechanical looking effect. Now one thing I did want to have is these shock absorbers from remote control cars on the back of the legs, so I need some brackets to hold them in place. So what I'm doing here is cutting out some aluminium sheet and cutting that down to size. So this is what I've ended up with for the back of the leg and as you can see because of the ball joints in the shock absorber this can move quite freely so that means I can position the robot however I need to and the mechanics will still move uh, to accommodate that motion. So I've got to a stage now where I can start painting the robot. So because this is so complicated, I'm going to have to completely dismantle it in order to paint it. What I've started doing is actually taping it up and labelling everything so I can remember exactly which piece came from where and in what order. Um, I think this is quite necessary for this sort of model, so I found that quite useful when I actually came to put this back together again. Throughout the project, I'd had it in my head to do some form of metallic looking paint scheme to this. I've recently become obsessed with Iron Man as you can see here um, so I didn't want to do a metallic red because I think with the brass in there as well this would instantly start looking like Iron Man so I decided to go for a metallic green so I popped down to a local car shop uh, this is Halfords uh, if you're in the UK and I've um, pulled out some metallic greens here what I've got is a couple of dark base coats, um, so I've got a bit of variation, and then I have a lighter colour for highlights as well. And just as a proof of concept, I actually had a go on one of my spare castings here. Uh, and I actually quite like the way that's come out. As you can see, there's a bit of a gradation from the dark green to the light. I quite like how that looks. Now something I've seen other people mention in their videos is to actually soak the spray paint in warm water before you start spraying. The idea being just to warm the paint up and loosen everything up a little bit. And because the finish of this is going to be quite important to me, I want to make sure I get as good a result as I can, so I'm going to give this approach a go. A technique I've also borrowed from Adam Savage's Tested is to attach all of the individual pieces of the project to a block of wood uh, on thin sticks so you can actually get to them from every angle. So that's quite useful, so I'm going to give that a go too. So the first part of this is to give everything an undercoat. And now that's dried I'm coming in and giving everything a coat of dark green. Something that the paint scheme has highlighted is this, you can see all these pits in the uh, paint and what this is is air bubbles in the cast where the paint hasn't been able to um, go over. Um, I thought a few layers of paint might actually hide this but it hasn't so that's something to bear in mind for a future project. I didn't think this would need pressure casting because it's a relatively basic shape but actually it looks like I would have benefited from doing that. Uh, nevertheless I'm not too worried about it, it sort of looks a bit like sort of pitted metal so I don't really mind that necessarily. So I'm just going to roll with it and uh, maybe put a bit of weathering in there uh, which will pick up the detail a little bit and should hopefully look quite nice. So now that my base layer of green has dried what I'm now doing is using the lighter shade of green to add some highlights. The way I'm doing that is sort of by holding the piece at arm's length and the spray paint quite far away from it and then holding the uh, piece I'm spray painting at an angle and what I'm trying to do is just get the lower part of the, uh, of the leg here and highlight that in lighter green while keeping the top section much darker. So for the top part that I like here, I want to keep certain sections dark and just want to add a bit of a gradient to the overall colour scheme. Okay, so now that my spray paint has dried, I can now come in and start adding some further detailing. So what I'm doing is using some thin down Tamiya paints, so I'm using uh, some isopropyl alcohol to thin that out. And I'm just putting in some panel line details here. I'm also adding some metallics to uh, simulate some paint chips here and there as well. I find that putting these down the edges of the panels does look quite nice. I'm trying not to weather this too much. I'm putting some chips here and there, but I don't want it to look too beaten up. So 
So the final part of the painting process is to actually add some shading with an airbrush. Now this is a technique I've used on previous projects and what I do is just tape over one part of the panel and then give a very subtle uh, black shading to the other panel. So when you take the uh, masking off you just have a slight variation in colour and I find that helps differentiate the different parts of the model and stops it all being one flat colour. Once I got the panels done, I then add some further shading just at the various uh, indents of the uh, piece and around some of the edges as well. So there we go, and with the brass insert in there, I think that looks quite nice. So I went back and forth on the head of the model quite a bit. When I was building this I'd originally thought that perhaps this might actually have a human face and maybe even hair um, and that the rest of the body would be sort of like a Robocop type sort of prosthesis. So I thought okay the head's going to be metal but how precisely should it look? What I started thinking was that perhaps I could actually start cutting some panel line detail into the head itself to give it a slightly more robotic look. So the head I'm using here is just a test casting that I did at the beginning of the project. So I'm just having a go at this one, um, seeing what sort of look I can get, and if it goes wrong that doesn't matter because I'm going to cast up another one. So I was quite happy with how that was looking, so I went ahead and pressure cast a new casting of the head. And that's what I've got here. As you can hopefully see, the original casting has some air bubbles here and there, and um, mostly around the finer details of the piece, so pressure casting was sort of necessary here just to get rid of those. So I've sketched in the pattern I want to go for and I'm now using a cutting bit on the Dremel to cut in some of the panel lines. That worked well enough for the straight lines and I'm now coming in with my uh, blunted blade in my X-Acto knife there and just scratching in the rest. So this is what I ended up with for the painted head and it looks okay but what I actually found was that the head was looking quite dark actually and um, once it was added to the final painted model and I found that a bit of a problem because it didn't stand out particularly and you kind of want the face um, in most sort of humanoid-esque models to sort of be the focal point of the model at least to some degree and I started thinking well maybe this should actually have some glowing eyes in line with the LEDs and the rest of the project so that left me with a bit of a quandary because this is a solid cast piece of resin and I wasn't quite sure how easily I could actually dread out the eyes and put some LEDs in I mean in principle you could but I didn't want to destroy um, all of the work I put into this so I had an initial go with the test piece and although it did sort of seem possible I started thinking maybe that wasn't really the way to go now because I had quite a high quantity of brass in the model, I started thinking well what if I were to actually cold cast the face and um, have a brass face instead of a green face. So to that end I started doing some cold casting using the same mould. Now this is what I came up with, but after a bit of buffing um, it wasn't really working, although it looked kind of cool. The colour of the brass just simply didn't match the brass I'd used for the rest of the project, so that was a bit of a dead end unfortunately. So I returned to my original idea of trying to put some uh, LEDs in the eyes. Because I had a few hollow castings uh, from when I'd done the cold cast, so I started thinking, well actually it's going to be much easier for me to hollow out the eyes on a hollow cast than it is a solid one. So that's what I started doing. As you can see, the cold casting does actually look quite cool with all the panel lines cut into it. So I'm thinking maybe this could be used for a separate project sometime. 
So this is what I've come up with, and as you can see, it largely looks like the original casting of the head, but it's actually hollow, and I've worked in some mechanical detailing on the inside of the head. I've added some neodymium magnets to hold the head in place, so I can actually take the face off uh, to get to the LEDs inside if I need to. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll have noticed I do quite like putting LEDs inside models. So I think it adds a degree of life to the internal workings of the model and implies that there's stuff going on inside beyond what you can actually see. So I think that's going to look quite nice here when I have some LEDs underneath all of these mechanical details. So now that I've got everything painted up, I can start putting everything back together again. Now this actually turned out to be a really complicated process because what I need to do is feed these wires through the leg up into the body. Because of that, that made things really, really difficult in terms of um, how I put this together. Things had to go together in a very specific way. It was quite a fiddly process, so I haven't really filmed a lot of it. Uh, but as you can see, as I've done this, I've taken the opportunity to work some lighting in to the various pieces of the model as I go. I've also added in this lighting feature for the torso. What this is is some side emitting fiber optic cable. What you do is put an LED at either end and the light will shine out the sides. Uh, in order to get this sort of pulsing look, what I've done is to put a flickering LED at each end. In the example here, I've used a blue and an orange LED, but in the final model, I actually ended up using two orange flickering LEDs. That way, it sort of looks like the light is pulsing up and down the cable. This round thing on the back of the model is actually something I made from a separate project. It was going to be some sort of weird helmet thing, um, but I wanted uh, for this model for it to have some additional pieces. Um, one of the original ideas I had for it was that it might be wearing some form of clothing, uh, but the problem with that is that once you start adding clothing, it covers all of the detail that you've added to the model itself. Um, so this is sort of a compromise where it's got some equipment on it, but not actual clothing. So what I've done here is to make a leather harness to hold the piece in place. The idea is that this is some sort of power supply for the gun. Right, so there we go. Uh, this is one of those ones that got more and more complicated the further into the project they got. Uh, and I, you can just keep adding detail and detail and detail to these things, so you've got to sort of stop somewhere. Um, so I had various other ideas for this, and the eagle eyed amongst you may have noticed I haven't actually got around to adding servos to this. While the model can move to a degree, uh, because I've now got all of these um, pieces hanging off it as well, it sort of restricted the motion of the model slightly. So I may come in and add some servos at a later date, but for the time being, I think I'm going to leave it here so if you made it this far through the video well thanks very much for watching i have a feeling this won't be the last robot project i embark on but i uh, might take a bit of a break just for the time being but anyway uh, thanks very much for watching and i'll see you next time thanks very much for watching I'll be posting videos on future projects, so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on, please do subscribe. Alternatively, you can visit my website, which is www.thedarkpower.com, or you can find me on Facebook, just search for The Dark Power.